These videos have gotten fucking boring, so instead of just telling you what I did this month, I'm gonna show you. Behold. No big deal, just a big fucking Ninja Turtle. Hey, what up, world? <laughs> So you're uh, you're the owner of this gallery, yeah. Mr. Bruce Lurie. I am sure. Right, you are. Sure. Why don't you tell the viewers a little bit about the history of the gallery and how you got into the art business? Okay, um, I started in the art business back in the er in the early '80s. As um, many did. And actually, even before that, when I was in college, I was I had a lot of friends who were in co uh, who were buddies of mine who were struggling artists. And I would look at their work and I said, God, you're so talented, it's, it's, it's not right that you should be broke and, and have no uh, way to make a living except, you know, you got to get your work out there. And of course, it's kind of difficult to find a gallery that's willing to give you a shot if you never had an opening or never had a show before. So what I did was I would go to these guys' studios and I said, I love this, love this and that. And I said, let me put it into a portfolio, and mostly smaller pieces, and, and work, mostly works on paper that I can carry around. So I put a bunch of works in a portfolio, and I would walk door to door into office buildings, knocking on doors, selling it to secretaries and, oh. and office managers. I'd get thrown out of a lot of buildings, but every once in a while, I'd meet someone that just moved into their office and say, hey, nice artwork. Uh, make a couple of sales and what I started doing was, was finding better and better artists because before you knew it I had people say hey my bro uh, my dealer is selling almost every day because we would hustle. Well, I opened the gallery in 1983 in New York uh -huh. and first I opened up in East Village uh -huh. and that was uh, at the time uh, yeah, the Monument Gallery on the Wall Gallery. There was about 40. What kind of work were you showing at that I time? Was, I believe it or not, I was showing street art also. Yeah. And you know, you do full circle. Well, that was the first graffiti wave. Right. And then with like the Futura and the Dundee and the Lee. Right. Uh, right. We remember like yeah. artists like, like Crash. Uh, yeah, he's still uh, around. So that was the kind of work. And then I had a, an opportunity uh, to, um, I knew Keith Herring. And he came to me one day and he said, I got this artist that uh, Leo Castelli really likes and he, he's only had a couple of smaller shows and that was uh, uh, obviously Basquiat, Michel Basquiat. Shit, you've been, you've been in this. It, this is back in 84 and we did a show and he was part of a group show that I put together. Just threw five of his pieces into the show and sold them all right away. And um, Unfortunately, I didn't keep one, I sold them all. And, uh, I was selling paintings for 1500 bucks back then. I were like three by four foot paintings, so sold all five of them. How could anybody really have known? Nobody, but I always say, you buy what you like, and when you, have a, when, you have a, when you have a buyer at the moment, you sell. So, you know, I held on to pieces. I always try to hold on to a piece. Keep one. One piece. I sell them all, keep one. one. Yeah, I always try to do that. And, um, you know, I, I've got artwork. I've, I have some artist works that I've still had since the early 80s. And were you continually in this business from yeah. then till now? Yeah. I, I, also, I was in the film business for a while also uh, as an actor with Stuntman and I enjoyed that and I did that for quite a few years. Is that what brought you out to the West That's Coast? That's what brought me out to the West Coast. And then I uh, decided to open a gallery here at the same time because in between those gigs that you're working uh, I decided to open another gallery. Yeah, if you need a little extra money, so why not yeah. get into the art yeah. business? <laughs> I think, you know, you're in a unique position, or at least I, I would like to think, you know, because uh, this has been going on for years, you know, maybe 
almost 20 years people have been doing this type of, you know, using toys in their mediums and all different aspects of expression. And it's done well in its own little bubble and it does well at the comic cons of the world and selling in these toy galleries and these so-called lowbrow art galleries but it has never really made that leap into the sort of fine art of the contemporary art world yeah. but it only takes like one brave visionary curator that sees the what's coming or sees yeah. the wave and and, and is the first guy to break it. So it's like this is one of the very few times that like a real art gallery has attempted to show this kind of work. So yeah. you might be onto something here. I, do you think I you can think, make something of this? I really do think so. I, I think it's it's a good time. It's, you know, people, uh, young collectors are looking for something different. They're looking for something that kind of stands out, uh, and it's. it's Friendly, you know, uh, without being too avant-garde and over the top and too much shock value. Yeah, so let's see if we can sell this shit. I can sell it. Okay, let's do some business. <laughs> we, we will sell it. And this Bruce is, Lurie this is Gallery, the... pay attention. You heard it here fucking first. Yeah. Look at this fucking car. Yeah, right. This is the guy that put the whole fucking thing together. Yeah, you know, why not drive a big Hot Wheel if I'm taking pictures of Hot Wheels? Yeah. never actually Wait. been inside of fucking yeah, Hot Wheels. I know, right? They're fun. I highly recommend them. There's no reason not to have one. I was driving all kinds of boring cars and I was like, what the fuck? Well, now you can afford it. So It's not even expensive. The, the, the ugly boring cars are expensive, you know? So you're Matthew Calden, right? Not Calden. Calden? Calden? Calden. Fuck Carden. that. I fucking Jeez. just checked up on it. Jesus. It's going to take, take me a minute. But I, I have heard of you. You're famous. I did Star Wars cookbooks. Yeah. <laughs> you, you said did that the, you own. <laughs> you did the Wookiee cookbooks and you also take all those pictures of toys and food and shit like that. I am like the miniature toy guy. I've been doing it for years. And you put this show together. Together. You're the so-called curator. First of time this. I have curated a show. Yes, I'm always showing work, but this is the first time I've brought together. What's the vision of the show, and what made you inspired to to put this together in the first place? Well, it, it, it's a culmination of my own personal interest in specific artists like yourself. I've known you about you for a long time, and other artists in this show I've I've met along the way. Some of them I actually own their work, and I've had this idea of bringing the two-dimensional toy art and the three-dimensional toy art together for a long time but didn't really know where or how that would work because the conventions aren't ready for the artwork and the galleries weren't ready for the toys and when I ran into Bruce and struck up a conversation about a year ago about this concept he liked it he's like yeah let's mix it up for the holidays and do something fun. I mean, do you think it's time for this toy art stuff to come out of the so-called Comic-Con ghetto, as I like to call well, it. Totally, because and... that's one of the, the, the underplayed things of the toy makers, is that they're, they're like artists and craftsmen, and they're kind of in a world where people are buying toys and vinyl, and it's not really defined as art. So, right. and, it's, and it doesn't need to be defined as high art, that's not the point. But it can be acknowledged for what it is. Maybe, but I mean, I think that that's always been the thing that's held back this this sort of movement or whatever. It's funny because you look at everything from graffiti to Warhol right. to, to you know to to pop art to even abstract expressionism. It, it always goes through a period where the so-called art world doesn't consider it to be art. Well, right. And that's the important incubation period where it sort of festers under its own frustration and it de demands to be considered art. And well, it's and that's like, what it feels like. It's kind of coming thrive. to that point, right? And, and, and the culture and our pop culture is all merging. So you, you see the movies and the TV shows and the references that our generation has from mm -hmm. the past 30 years of TV shows and movies. And now we're the ones making the art, and the people buying art are that same generation. Right. So the, the the kind of pop culture that people want to consume now is this kind of hybrid, postmodern version of all the other pop art. Right. <laughs> you I know? Mean, people love appropriation, and it's this is like I mean I always said like the the stormtrooper is the Campbell soup of our generation. Totally. Totally. You know, yeah. it's just like kind of like a blank slate that you can project anything onto. And so many have, right? Yeah, you exactly. See that everywhere, and Darth Vader's helmet, same idea. Pretty yeah, much, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, I mean, I personally am getting tired of doing all that shit. I feel like even you know just referencing other things is getting old. Yeah, but right. if people want to start spending some art money on it, then That's I can I, mean. I can be inspired again.
Wow. You mad at me? Always. I've been talking a lot of shit about your toys. You've, you've always, yes, forever, dude. Does that offend you? No, it doesn't. You gotta know that you're at the top of the game right now. Here's the thing. You're winning right now. You're... I got a toothbrush in my fucking pocket. Your, uh... Your remarks are right on point with, with your persona, so it makes sense. I don't take offense to it ever. Right, you should. It's just other people. Certain other who people. Created, who created... Who, who, who made that Who made that meme? Who, which meme? The, 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 the Suck Lord Trashed My Toy meme. You haven't seen that? I fucking oh, see okay. It sounds amazing. Well, I'm doing you a service because right now you're winning at the bootleg game. You're kind of at the top of the game, and it it, it wouldn't it wouldn't be real if if there weren't people throwing rocks at you. That's true. You know what you should do is get together a bunch of guys and review my shit and hold it to the same standard I hold you guys to, because you know that would be interesting, wouldn't it? It would be interesting. Didn't you put up a review show? I did. I, we did it impromptu because uh, my buddy uh, he's actually here, Carlos Mock Toys. Did you did you no. review any of my shit? No, no, no. You we should do. You should do that. Can't find any of your shit. See. But you spelled it wrong. Where's the K? Oh, fuck, you're right. <laughs> Shit. some VR porn, which I've never done before. All right, what's your poison, man? Pick it, what do you want? What do you got? I got everything. Cum shots? Well, yeah, of course. Anal and cum shots. Uh, <laughs> all right, let me go this way. <laughs> okay, I'm doing this one. Two <coughs> naughty maids. Why not? They do it all. 
Okay. They don't speak English, is that okay? Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Here, put that thing on. Just like put it over your head. All right, don't touch the side. Oh, shit. This is going to be interesting. It's not really, oh. Okay. All right. All right, well, I'm in a, I'm in a really fucking corny ass room. Just like a white box with a stupid painting. And there's these two trashy looking, like Russian maid types cleaning the house. Oh, and I see I'm holding a drink, and I'm wearing like blue pants and this shirt. And here's my hand. I'm a white guy. Watch the hand, okay? <laughs> and I'm just sitting here like an asshole, watching these stupid bitches clean my house. Right. Wow. Holy shit. What the fuck? Damn. So she's sticking her ass and pussy out. And it really, really looks like she's right Is there. Is she on the bed? Yeah, she's on the bed. I remember this. The blonde girl. But, like, you can't make this do anything. I just gotta sit here and watch this movie, right? They do. <laughs> it, it does just fine on its own. I mean, I can't just... Oh, if you could fast forward it, if you want. But I can't be like, oh, I want to fuck her now. No. Get on the bed. Okay. No, it's just a video. Oh, so they're both looking at me and looking at my cock, and they're acting like this is a big fucking deal that they're here. <laughs> oh, shit. So now the blonde is down. Oh, shit. She's making eye contact. This is pretty good. <laughs> I'm getting kind of turned on. Uh-oh. It's weird because they're like touching my legs. I Go ahead and do shit. it. Go you ahead and touch no, my not leg. Do, no, I'm, not, I'm not going to touch your leg. It's weird. I feel. Oh, they, she's taking a drink out of my hand. Wait. <laughs> I want that. <laughs> and then there's like the digital menu, like way over there. Yeah, don't. Yeah, okay, don't yeah, yeah see, that's the I thing. See. It's all in front right, of you. Right, come on. Come on. Suck the cock Hang already. On, dude, patience, patience. Whoa, this is friend. really bizarre. <laughs> ah, choke. <laughs> it's like whispering in my ear. Wow, I want. Ah, this is so frustrating. Well, maybe that's where we're gonna end up. This sucks. You said you wanted cum shots. Okay, she's taking my cock out now. <laughs> Both of them are hand. Oh wow. I wish I. I feel like I'm paralyzed from the neck down. Well, because <laughs> oh, they're making out. Man, they're hot. <laughs> oh, there's the cock. <laughs> it's, it's balls are shaved, just sitting there. Ew, the dickhead is so small compared to the rest of the shaft. Is it? And now she's I, sucking it. It's like one of those flat penises. <laughs> oh, she's spitting on my dick. <laughs> bitch. She's pretty nasty. This Just... one's taking her titties out. Yeah. Okay, she's sucking the dick. Uh, this is insane, man. <laughs> right, pause it. Pause it. <laughs> hey, take it off, take it off. Uh, you want to try this? Uh -huh. Oh, shit. Being back sucks even worse. <laughs> oh god, that was so fucking weird.
Super Suck Lord is on board the Flavor Flav train. Exclusive bootleg figure available only on Kickstarter for the new Flavor Flav TV show. Going all the way to Vegas, baby. You know what time it is. And that was November. See you next month. I'm sorry. Suck your kicks in. I'm not going to.